My name is Dan White. I live with a hidden disability and I'm a carer to my disabled daughter, Emily. I am an ambassador for the Food Foundation and policy and campaigns officer at Disability Rights UK, as well as the co-lead of the Disability Poverty Campaign Group, a coalition of many disabled people's organisations and charities, all aware that food poverty for disabled people is increasing. I can't be with you today due to the nature of care and the lack of decent and humane investment in social care services. I'm working and caring for my daughter from home, spinning plates and running on empty, and it's exhausting. But I'm here to talk about food poverty and access to food. My daughter Emily has chewing and swallowing issues, so the food we buy is vitally important and because of her sensory issues, difficult, time-consuming and expensive, as everyday value foods will often be full of ingredients detrimental to her health. Because access to food is difficult due to inaccessible transport and supermarket layouts. And because benefits for disabled people are far too low to support the differing needs of their lives. It's not just my daughter, however. Food insecurity is rife. It is now a tragic part of daily life. Not just for disabled people, but for financially vulnerable people all across the UK. Through my work, reading the reports and hearing the stories, we know for absolute fact that most food bank users are disabled people. Disabled people are far times more likely to be at risk from food insecurity compared to non-disabled people. Carers of disabled children are reporting skipping meals or cutting the size of their meals because there isn't enough money for food and because they are now being forced to pay back huge overpayments to the DWP and so on and so on and so on. The struggles of putting food on the table for disabled people are mirrored by other families. For instance, 7.2 million adults experienced food insecurity in July 2024. 18% of households with children reported experiencing food insecurity compared with 12% of households without children, and so on and so on. This is incredible in the UK in 2024, a fact that disabled adults, children and carers, indeed any financially vulnerable person who is being forced to make stark and destructive choices over something as basic as food is morally repugnant. The last UK government did very little to understand, combat or resolve the issue of food poverty. It especially did very little to work with disabled people's organisations on the growing issue of disability and food poverty. The hope is that this new Labour government, with its openness and willingness to listen and cooperate, will take up the baton and work with organisations like the Food Foundation, work with those of lived experience of all communities who can provide the reports, the time and the direction to which we should be going in. We have seen the welcome announcement of the Child Poverty Task Force. This is a start, a start that we hope we can collaborate on. We need to begin to make sure that everyone has access to decent, edible, healthy food without the price tags and the inaccessibility of getting it. To make sure no carer, disabled, child or financially vulnerable family sees food purely as a luxury. Only by working together will this issue be banished to history. Remember, food is the moral right of all those who are born into this world.